G'day, this is Captain Noob, and finally, a TSC weapon that I'm actually specced to use properly. This is the two-shot explosive handmade rifle, and it is a really, really powerful weapon. We've also got the Prime Receiver, so we do more damage to Scorch Beast and Scorch, which would be very good if we're facing off against the Queen. And we're also doing 195 damage off the bat there without any perks, which is round about what you'd get with a Gorse Rifle, so yeah, this thing's hitting pretty hard. It is not without flaw though, and we'll see that a little bit later. But first of all, let's go ahead and spec our perks into this. So first of all, to get our explosive damage up, we'll go Demolitions Expert all the way up to 100 now. I've just shuffled some special points around, so I'm able to get Demolitions Expert to number 5. We'll go Commando, Expert Commando, rank 3 as well. We'll go Grenadier and Master Commando. And with all of those perks applied, this thing does 469 damage, which is crazy. I think for some reason, the splash damage for these weapons is equal to the damage shown on here. That's why they're so powerful. I think that's what happened, because if you use a Gorse Rifle with the explosive damage, it's only a little bit of extra damage that you happen to get near your target. But for some reason, I don't know, I feel like it inherits the base damage of the weapon. So if you get that super high, you'll be laughing. Attachment-wise, it's kind of the same that I had my Furious Handmade Rifle on, except I've got the Prime Receiver here, which, compared to the Powerful Auto, does a little bit more damage, which is useful, and of course, the aforementioned bonus damage to Scorch people. Um, to find this, you'll need to kill Scorch Beasts, and they'll sometimes drop the schematics. It is a rare drop, though, so make sure you want to go ahead and target the higher-level Scorch Beast, or maybe the Queen can even drop this. I've only killed her a few times, so... I'm not really sure. True long barrel, just like last time, as well as the grip. Replacing the stinging magazine is a drum magazine. That gives you, like, 80 bullets, which is crazy, because the other drum magazines only give you, like, a little bit more than you get out of the stinging magazine. So maybe that's a little bit of an error on Bethesda's part, but we won't, we'll be missing out on a little bit of armor penetration. But with the damage we've got, it won't be a problem, so we'll just go for the highest ammo capacity. Also has a slower reload, but... Not really a problem there. Same reflex light and a suppressor to keep ourselves nice and hidden. Not that we'll really need sneak attack criticals to do a lot of damage, but stacking even more damage on top of this is going to be fun. And whilst we're on the topic of prime receivers, they'll actually require a different type of ammo, just called Ultrasight ammo, which will require Ultrasight and also some flux out of nuke zones. So yeah, getting this ammo is a little bit tricky, but you are rewarded for it with a little bit extra damage. Alrighty, let's start off today with a little bit of Scorch Beast hunting. So, uh, first of all, we'll just get his attention and wait for him to come nice and close. Well, I'm being shot at by something. Are they Scorched down there? Well then, if they're, if they're gonna do that, I'm just gonna kill them for extra adrenaline. Thank you for the bonus damage. Also, unnecessary reload number one. Alright, looks like we're good here. And with that adrenaline, we've got, let's see, plus 40% damage. And there's another one just here. We'll just take him out. And as for that one, who's a little bit further away, we'll just lure him in with a little bit of shooting. Alright, here he is. And although we're detected by him, he's gonna have no we're gonna have no problem taking him out because we've got all of this extra damage. So not being you know, not having to rely on sneak attack criticals to actually perform a lot of damage is uh, yesterday's problem because this thing, it kicks a lot of ass. But those were only level 50 Scorch Beast. I want to see if I can get a level 80 to show up. Well, we've got another level 50 here, so we'll take him out, I suppose. Now, the recoil on this, and as well as the accuracy on this, does suffer thanks to the two shot effect and, um, it seems that the explosive glitch is kind of around sometimes, because sometimes he just refuses to take damage and just sort of regens like nothing happens, but for the most part they ironed out that glitch and since this thing hits as hard as it does, I'm not going to really be complaining about it because we can easily just make up that damage lost by shooting him some more. There's not a whole lot of uh, skill that goes into these weapons, just make sure your shots connect and you'll be doing fine with basically any fight as long as you can keep the explosions away from yourself. Okay, so I want to kind of explore the accuracy of this weapon. As you saw before in my perk chart, I've got Ground Pounder. At rank 2, I've less, left an extra rank out of that just to get an, a little bit more explosive radius. But as you can tell, the um, spread of this doesn't seem too bad. When you do move though, the, um, the crosshairs do bloom a little bit, but when you're standing still and crouching, it doesn't actually seem to be that bad. 
knowing this, we should be able to take out these super mutants okay at range, even from here. I think he was obscured by that uh, van there, but we managed to get him eventually, thanks to concentrated fire. Although shooting at this wall from here would... Yeah, okay, this thing's not really that accurate, but it's nowhere near as bad as the um, two-shot explosive MG the other day. At a sort of medium range, you could probably get away with doing this. You don't really need that to stack criticals like you would do with the regular Stealth Commando build to actually do a lot of damage though. But if you want to boost it even more, say you're fighting some Scorch Beast Queen or something and... Okay, those cars are wrestling apparently. Um, yeah, if you're fighting a big tough baddie and you needed to get that tiny little bit of extra damage, I mean, heaps of extra damage, then it'd be a good idea to use this thing in VATS a little bit. So, Maybe you could probably get away with taking out all of your VATS perks with this and just replacing it with something like Bloody Mess. That'd definitely be a good damage multiplier on this. I could get that base damage even higher. But when you're doing that kind of damage just to regular dudes, honestly, it doesn't feel that necessary. So, there we go. I think we've cleared out all of the muties around here. Yes, we have. We're still in hidden. Have one last check around here. So, yeah. Against regular dudes, this thing can just wipe the floor with basically anything so if you're talking about balance when it comes to this thing totally unbalanced remove it from the game okay let's see if we can get ourselves into some sort of crazy crowd control situation with floating things all right here they come we've got their attention juju not sneaking and oh there's a wendigo around too so hopefully we'll grab his attention in a second and i guess this is not the best place to defend from so i'll just sit here and wait for him to come through the door and then gun them down in this little choke point. I'll use that table there to bounce splash damage off the wall and wait for them all to sort of rock up. Hopefully we'll be able to collect all of them. Probably an unnecessary reload there but that's okay. That ghoul kind of got stuck on that pram there and last but not least the Wendigo comes out and dives in, has a big attack and then he dies. Now the boss is dead. I think think all of the ghouls that are left are about to come out or possibly are dead at this point so around the corner anything here yes there is oh that one's t-posing well that's an easy kill then oh we didn't actually get him all right are we done not quite a couple more ghoulies to come around we'll just hop up and kill them like that back into caution now probably a good idea to sneak at this point simply because there's no um, way for me to readily run outside, so... And all these ghouls kind of just stand around waiting for you to do something, so... In that case, probably a good idea to stay in caution for at least this bit. It'd be nice if I could just get a big loud noise to lure them all out. Maybe I should have taken off the suppressor. That would have drawn them all out faster, but... Uh, not quite done yet. Probably downstairs there's a couple more ghoulies waiting around. I know there's a couple that spawn over in this room. One of them is behind the counter. Yep. And that might actually be a clean sweep there. With the only hit we got was from the Wendigo when he sort of dived out the door. But that's okay. I don't mind being hit by Wendigos because they're a little bit more on the... They're cooler. Oh, there's, there's a swimsuit there. Yeah, they're cooler than the other ghouls in here. The ghouls are boring. Wendigos are actually kind of cool. Oh, if I was a melee character, I'd probably like to have something like that. But there you go, in crowd control situations where you can easily just get it choke pointed, you've got no problems with the two shot explosive handmade rifle. Alrighty, so someone has gone ahead and summoned the Scorched Beast Queen. Hopefully, I don't lag a lot, but yep, there she is. Might as well go ahead and try to take her out with my newly acquired two shot thing. Wow, that's doing fuck all. Okay, I saw a tiny little bit of um, health damage there, but she has landed now, which means we should be able to get stuck into her a little bit better. And yeah, despite doing all of that damage before, that is the extent of what we can do with a two-shot explosive prime handmade rifle. But that's okay, we're, we're doing pretty good so far, there's things attacking me. Excuse me, would you just kindly fuck off? That's okay, these guys I can build adrenaline off of, and that means I'll be doing more damage, so... Don't really care. 
when you fire this thing full order, you really get that over the top recoil, but it doesn't seem so bad when you hit firing it. Which is kind of weird. Another Scorch dude there. Another one there. Holy shit, why do I keep getting staggered? Is there someone who's hitting me with a stick that I can't see? Because that has happened before. Well, there's something. It was a rat or something, I don't know. Also, that was a really close missile. Ah, it was him. Okay, so that should give us... Hmm. Okay, we're back. Um, I didn't have adrenaline equipped. I was crafting some ammo before, but that's okay. Scorch Beast Queen hasn't really moved, so I'll just continue to shoot her like this. I'll also harvest that disease cranberry. Why the hell not, eh? Get some bat shots on her. Okay, yeah, that's doing the damage right there. Now, if only I was hidden at the moment, that would be a lot better. Okay, let's try to get some of this damage stacking here. Let's see. Oh, well, that one was definitely some sort of high-level creature. So, we'll just go ahead and shoot over in this direction. And we're at damage plus 60%. There we go. Adrenaline is maxed. We've got a full AP bar. Let's get stuck in a Scorch Beast Queen. There we go. That's what being a stealth commander was all about. Look at all those sneak attack criticals. So we're only, what, like four minutes into this fight and she's already mutated, so we're going to be in very good shape if we can keep up this momentum. We are spotted right now, though, so that is something to be worried about. This guy doesn't show up. I guess he's sneaking right now. Sometimes I get weary of players that don't actually show up. Alright, escape artist, if you could do your thing. I'm still getting staggered, probably by that attack, but I'm a little bit too late at the moment. Ah, okay, it's broken. I'll be right back. Okay, just a quick little mess around with the camp system later, and we haven't missed out on a whole lot of fights, so we'll continue to shoot her. And for some reason, whenever she does that whole crop duster attack, wow, that guy's really struggling. Yeah, when she does that crop duster attack, it just... She goes through the ground basically every time, which is weird. Anyway, she's nice and close now. Only one of those bullets hit. Thanks, game. That might just be the two-shot accuracy um, making that happen, though. And unfortunately, it's the daytime now, so only getting 2.5 times sneak attack criticals. But she seems to be keen to just sit there. All of the melee grognacks are running in. Dude, clear my line of fire. What a dero. <laughs> Alright. We'll go ahead and stealth commando them and... Okay. It's a little bit laggy, but I've got a plan. I'm going to eat some coffee, and then I'm going to get lots of my AP back. Alright, game. Don't crash on me, please. Don't crash or disconnect. Just killing some dudes here, and we're back at an adequate supply of, hopefully, adequate supply of adrenaline. Yep, 50%. Can do no wrong with that. Uh, whoops. I think that guy attacked my camp. You know what? That's your own fault, mate. In comes Scorch Beast Queen. We'll just get ourselves jetpacking out of our own way there. And now we can go ahead and take her out. Um, nice of you to sit there, by the way. That's actually making it super easy to demonstrate what kind of power this weapon has behind it. Last time I fought a Scorch Beast Queen like this, she ended up just sitting there like that. For the, She just sort of gave up. It's like, alright, you can have it. So I think that's happening again. But even so, we get a nice point of seeing what kind of damage this thing can do. Alright, let's go and target her face brain. Oh, you made her move. Oops. Almost shot myself there due to that guy backing right into me. I don't have chameleon armor, so you would have known I was there. Almost done now. Everyone's getting stuck into him with their various explosive shotguns and explosive handmade rifles and whatever tickles their fancy. It's team effort though, even though I did most of it. Nah, just kidding. I'm not sure how much I did. I wish I kind of wish it would show what like how much you do, like as a, like a thing that would happen after the, excuse me. Okay. 
What did the old girl give us then? She got us minigun, ultra sight helmet, pipe pipe gun receiver. Hey, that's cool. I could put that on my level one pipe gun and shoot things with it. She gave us an alright thing. Oh wait, hang on, there's something. Mutant's black powder pistol. Okay, she's dead, fellas. And yes, Scorched Beast Reign of Terror is ended. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna move my camp out here because it's going to get destroyed by all these guys firing their explosive weapons around here, yes. Okay, looks like it's not my house anymore. He's decided to move in. Well, guess what? You're evicted now, my good crab man. So, there you have it, the two-shot explosive handmade rifle and it's all its glory. I didn't actually expect to kill a Scorch Beast Queen today, but the event popped up after recording that ghoul section, so I thought, yeah, why not? We'll go down there, see how it does, and it did really, really well. Question is, though, is it as good as other two-shot explosive weapons, namely the machine gun, the big 50 MG, and also the Gatling gun, because they definitely have their merits to them. I'll let you decide down below. Have a fight over it or something. Thank you for watching, guys.